Good morning, church, and you're welcome to Sunday service. My name is Pastor Eddie, and I'd just like to thank the um, pastors and ministers in the Providence Church. Thank you very much for um, putting this up. Thank you, John Bo. Thank you, the multimedia team. I really appreciate the work that you're doing. God bless you. Now, this morning, we're going to go into the scriptures and for just a topic, if you're at home and you want to take notes, I've called this topic, the end of all things is near. Can you say the end of all things is near? And the scripture we're going to be looking at today is 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. You can just turn your Bibles with me. It's a very short verse, but I really like it. Now, I've preached on this verse a number of times. A few times I've paid attention to love of the brethren. When you look at verse 8, 9, 10 to 11, we've talked about prayerfulness. Uh, we've talked about sharing. But then today we're going to focus more on prayer. So 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 reads, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful, in your prayers. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in all things. Now, if you can just close your eyes and let's just say a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word that you bring for your people today. Thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit that is able to give us understanding even where we sit. And I pray, Lord, that today you will open up the ears of your children. I pray, Father, today you will give us insight into your word like never before. And we thank you, Father, for your provision that is sufficient unto us all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So, church, Looking at that scripture that we just read, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Now, if we were to just take a moment there and look at those, that last sentence that talks about the word therefore. Therefore could be replaced, if you like, with consequently, as a result of this. For the reason that the end is coming, it says be serious, meaning be intentional, severe, stern, stand your ground, be watchful, be on alert, be wide awake, be disciplined, exercise self-control. And the word prayer, prayer means different things to different people. But I'll tell you one thing it definitely means. Prayer as a Christian is talking to God. I once heard about a flight where a man was praying and mumbling and murmuring in tongues and a Christian brother was sitting right next to this man and he said, you must be a Christian. He said, why? He said, because I saw you praying. And he just chuckled away and laughed at the man and said, it's funny because you Christians think you're the only ones that pray. But he happened to be a devil worshiper. So what I want to say to you is prayer is communication with a being. But as a Christian, I'm talking about the prayer that is communication with God. This sort of prayer, it's not just about talking to God. It's about your lifestyle. It's about the way that you respond. It's about the words that you use. The end of all things is at hand. Peter was talking in this verse. He was teaching his, the people. And I wondered when I read the scripture, was he claiming or teaching that Jesus would come back in a few months or years and then the end will come and then he establishes his kingdom? Was he like some of us in the days that we're in? Was he mistaken about his prediction? Was he trying to predict something that he felt or sensed in his spirit just because of the times they were in? Was it because of the persecution they were going through? I've watched the news and I 
watch Facebook once in a while when I've got the time and I hear all sorts of people saying all sorts of things. As a matter of fact, everyone has an opinion. And I was talking to a friend of mine who was telling me about um, some mystical you know, opinion about the elites of the world ruling the world and you know, they're the cause of all the problems that we're seeing today and all that stuff. And I said to this brother of mine, you know what? It really depends on the lenses that you choose to wear. Are you going to wear the lenses of Jesus? Are you going to live by the discernment of the Holy Spirit? Or are you going to just go with the flow of what the world is telling you? Child of God, we need to develop a hearing, an understanding of what the Spirit of God is saying. So Peter was teaching that Jesus will come back at any moment because everything that Jesus said would happen had already happened. So it was clear that the return of Jesus Christ was imminent. It was something that was bound to happen at some point in time because the signs were telling. Now I'll tell you one more thing. In the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 6, Peter was there when the apostles asked Jesus and they said, if now is the time that the kingdom will be established. And Peter heard Jesus say, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has fixed in his own authority. You can find that in Acts chapter one and verse seven. But tell you something else. In the following verses, Jesus also says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you to witness unto me, this is Jesus, in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this includes Australia as well. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Peter was told pretty much that understanding the times or the seasons was none of his business. His business was to go on and do the master's bidding until he returns. And what that means is to go on and spread the gospel to every single nation. Now, I know you've heard this before, but this is not the time where we wallow in fear. This is a time for us to get serious about spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. But in this teaching of Peter, talking about the end of all things to come, I follow the clue in that scripture, which is a word on prayer. It says, therefore, in some scriptural, verse, um, some scriptural examples, it says, therefore be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Be of sound judgment. Sound judgment is all about discernment. And you cannot have discernment without the Holy Spirit. So Peter connects the end times with the need and the urgency for prayer. And this points us back to the teaching of Jesus who did the same thing in Luke chapter 21, verse 36. And he said, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. He didn't say, watch and pray always to escape some. He said to escape all these things. And you know what I love about Jesus? Jesus always told the truth. He always put all his cards on the table right before you even said anything. He laid it all out. So he said, look, in this world, you will face trials. You will face persecution. If they hated me, they will hate you as well. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you as well. He didn't say at any point in time that becoming a Christian was all hunky-dory. He didn't say at any point in time, come to me and I'll give you all the good things of life. He said, you will have peace, 
you will have rest in me, he said, that you will also have persecution. You will also go through trials and tribulation. So the point of praying for escape, this is not to say, and I say this carefully, this is not to say that Christians would escape anything. It means pray for the strength so that you can outlast the times that we're in. Pray for the strength so that you wouldn't fall into the trap of worldliness. Because when we fall into the trap of worldliness and the cares of this world, here's what happens. We become dull spiritually. We lose sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And this strength that I'm talking about, this strength is only by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Peter was there when Jesus thought about it and Jesus taught him, so he learned from Jesus. So let's stay in the context of Luke chapter 21 for a bit and let's see what Peter learned from Jesus. He learned that we must have discernment. We must be sober. We must be humble. Brothers and sisters, the end is near and we must exercise sound judgment. Because without discernment, you cannot actually pray in accordance with God's will. Discernment is something that the Holy Spirit gives to you, something that comes from hearing God, something that comes from having a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. So let us examine ourselves today and see if we truly have a relationship with the person of Jesus Christ. This is not just another sermon, and I'm not here to condemn anyone today, but this is a message for you. Examine yourself. I started examining myself over and over and over again. And I could tell you that the more you do that, the more light the Holy Spirit shines on the areas that are dark in your life. I can tell you for a fact that when I started to examine myself, God started to show me the inner secrets of my heart that nobody knows about, the inner pride, the inner lies, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But you've got to come to a place of honesty, You've got to come to a place of brokenness. You've got to come to a place where you can be open with your father because he knows you better than you know yourself. Church is not a place where you fake it till you make it. The more you fake it, the farther away you go into destruction. Church is a place where you come to Jesus. He said, come to me all those who are weary and I will give you rest. Church is a place where you come to have an encounter with God. Church is a place where you receive the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through fellowship with Jesus. That's what church looked like in the book of Acts. And when I looked at the church in Acts and I look at what's going on today, I can't help but ask the question, God, why is this so? God, what is happening in our day? I started asking that question exactly two years ago at around about this time almost. And God started to help me understand. And I can tell you that one of the reasons why we don't see miracles in church, one of the reasons why we pray and there are no answers, one of the reasons why we, we're full of theology and we're full of exaggeration of the things that are not even important is because we have dishonored or separated our ministries 
from the person of the Holy Spirit. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you to be a witness unto me. The same Holy Spirit, let me remind you, the same Holy Spirit that was expressed through the men of God, the apostles in the Bible, the same Holy Spirit that made men look at the likes of Peter and Paul and say, these men must be gods because there was a demonstration of such power of magnitude by God through their lives that people started to compare them to the likes of Zeus, the Greek gods, because they'd never seen anything like that before. The same Holy Spirit that caused those men to walk along the streets and people were healed. But what I have today in the church is fear. And I'm not saying to anybody at home today or watching this that you should be silly or test God. But what I'm saying to you is you should be convicted and assured of who you are in Christ. And if you're not, then that's exactly what you need to be on about at this time. Because the end of all things is near. And one thing about the end of all things is that persecution and trials will come and it will test your faith to determine whether or not you truly have a relationship with God, to determine whether or not all that noise you make on Sunday is truly who you are, to determine if you're going to run to the mountain to God, if you're going to look up or you're going to run sideways to the hospital. And you know what? Your friends, your family, your generations are depending on you. So if you sleep through this period, if you take it for granted, you might lose the opportunity that God has given to you in the life that he's given to all of us as Christians or children of God. That we are all God's creation. And the Bible says that in the last days he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Jesus Christ was talking to the Samaritan woman and he said to her, that you know not what you worship, but we know what we worship. And he said, there will come a time when you will neither worship in that mountain or this mountain. And this is a time that he was talking about. Salvation is not for a special kind of people. It is for everyone. And as a truth, this woman had five husbands. This woman was not qualified at all. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ was teaching us that even someone who has committed adultery, even someone who is unworthy, is able to worship him in spirit and in truth when you come to know Jesus, when you come to know him for who he is. The testimony came in the last verse of that chapter in John where the people said, we have seen the Messiah. That was the testimony. Praise the Lord. So let's go back to prayer. While prayer in itself is a solution to the problem, an even bigger problem is the pretense and the lies that take place, the over-exaggeration. Jesus Christ was talking about men who like respect, they like phylacteries, they like the positions of church. Men who would come on the pulpit, and I'm not criticizing preachers here, but I'm telling you what's going on in our days. It's not bad to have an education. But the mysteries of God, the issues of the Spirit, are not about how many years you've been in a college. They're not about being a doctor or a professor. They're not about the titles. It is about fellowship. It is about intimacy with God. 
I once heard someone say to me, oh, come on, let's face it. Nobody hears the voice of God. But that is a lie. God is a speaking God and he speaks. If only you and I would take the time to develop a hearing for the spirit of God. If only you and I would take the time to be led by the spirit of God. We would have answers to our prayers every single time. Because the Bible says that you don't receive because you ask amiss. But if you pray and you believe anything that you ask in my name, you shall receive. And I believe that. I have received that. And you must receive it as well in the name of Jesus. So this is not about condemning anyone. This is about discussing truth today. The Bible confirms that there is a judgment awaiting teachers of the law who have taken pride in ministries. You know, you're so much entangled in building a church. You're so entangled in the workings of the ministry, but you've left the place of relationship. You've left the place of hearing. And I'll talk about hearing shortly. But the judgment pronounced on these people by Jesus, he says that they will not enter the kingdom. They will not do the master's bidding. But the worst part is they stop those who want to enter from entering. Because of these behaviors, people look at Christians and say, I don't want to be like that. If that's what it takes to be a Christian, then I'm not interested. You know? You carry the Zoe power of God. You carry the life of God. But when, when, when your mate goes to see a shrink, you're there trying to see the shrink too. You even try to sometimes spiritualize the occasion. You're doing the wrong thing, but you say, look, in the name of Jesus, you know, we're just going to have a dance party, but we're just going to do this and we're going to lift it up to God first. I've been for parties where they ask you to come and say a prayer. There's no intention whatsoever to give God honor, but you want to just put God into it. We need to stop using God. God is not about, he gives us the blessings. Yes, we enjoy those blessings, but it's not about God, fix me up. God, give me a good house. Give me a job. Give me the woman of my life or my dreams. God, bless my parents. That's not what this is about. How about doing the master's bidding. How about worship? How about intimacy with God? I want to tell you something, that for you to believe and for you to have that sort of intimacy with God or the Holy Spirit, you need to have faith. And I want to address something here because I was in church as a child and I was taught about faith. We memorize these verses about faith and it is true. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But here's the thing. Preachers teach about faith. They teach about hearing and hearing by the word of God. As a matter of fact, they, they, they claim that the hearing is the preaching that they preach to you and what you hear, but it's not true. The hearing that you ought to hear is the words that are spoken by the Holy Spirit himself. And if the Holy Spirit speaks to you through his word, that is the sort of encounter that you need from the scriptures to move mountains. But so, so often we read the Bible and we say, we read the Bible, we play the audio music, audio Bible, sorry. We play all that stuff, but we're not hearing what the Spirit of God is saying. Now, we need to come into a time of hearing because that's really important. There is no time in history where people have prayed more times than we have today. And the problem is not that we don't pray. The problem is more about unanswered prayers. I want to say this to you as an example. I've got my wallet in my hand. Now, if I went to God and I asked God through his word for a wallet, I received this wallet by faith. But guess what? This faith I'm talking about is a faith of knowing, a faith that makes you to be persuaded and convicted 
that you are holding this wallet in your hand. However, when I come out of that place of prayer, and I come out of that place, that secret place, and I tell you that it is well because I've received this wallet, you don't see it. It doesn't matter if you don't see it, but I know it because I have held it and it is tangible in my spirit. And that's what it could be like for you when you pray, that you hear God's word, you hear God's spoken word, God's revelation to you, whether reading the Bible or meditating or praying. Now, a lot of Pentecostal churches have reduced this to just speaking in tongues. Oh, you know, you speak in tongues and people fall everywhere. Brother and sister, there is so much more power in God than that stuff that we get high on. That's not it. There is so much more. We need to come to a place where we, are, we have a desire to, to run after God and ask questions. And if we don't get those answers, we stay with him until it is revealed because there is always an answer. Sometimes we say, oh, now just pray. If God doesn't answer you, maybe it's not his will. Or maybe I wasn't meant to have it. Or maybe it's because of my sins. We give excuses for everything. What we need to do is deal with is our hearts. What we need to deal with is unbelief. And we need to help tell God, God, help me understand what it means to have faith in you. Job chapter 32 and verse 8. It says, but there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. You are a spirit first before you became who you are. And you need the breath of the Almighty to give you understanding. So I want to say, church, brother, sister, wherever you are, we need to have an encounter with God. We need to hear from God and we need to be found in the secret place. Your life can be a life of prayer and your life can become a prayer to someone else. But it talks, it, it's all about intimacy with God. And if I were you, while you spend time hibernating at home, while there's not much distractions out there for you anymore, don't busy yourself watching TV all day. Pick up a Bible, say a prayer. Take this time to get closer to God because we haven't seen the last of it yet. However, the Bible tells us that we don't war against flesh and blood. Whatever you see going on out there is controlled by a spirit. You certainly don't control that by intellect. That's been proven already. It's not about going to school. It's not about degrees. It's not about a vaccine. It's about a spirit of darkness that requires someone like you and I who will stand in the place of prayer and oppose these things for generations and for the nation. Now, God is raising up a people because I tell you what, everything that we do can be done to the glory of God. The problem that we've got is the excesses and the over-exaggeration where the things that are meant to serve you, you begin to worship instead of the mighty God that has created those things. I said, rather than give God the glory, rather than worship God, we have given all of our attention to things that are less. I mean, I woke up this morning and I had a chat with someone, a family member of mine, and they, they were genuinely, oh, be careful when you go out this morning. Be careful. Don't touch your face. Don't do this. Don't do that. And with the love of God, I said, when I went to bed last night and I woke up this morning, I didn't do anything to come alive today. It was God. Brethren, friends, you need to come into that place of understanding. It is not about what you do or what you don't do. It is about the God before whom you walk. He said, you will trample upon snakes and scorpions and they will do you no harm. You will eat 
something that is poisonous and no harm that will come near to you. I'm not asking you to go and experiment. I'm asking you to get to a place of conviction and persuasion of who you are in Christ so that you can walk this earth with the word and with power so that you can be effective as a Christian so that you can be an ambassador, a true ambassador of Christ, not an imposter. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to hear God. And I believe that you've heard God this morning. So I want to pray for you. And if you're sitting there and you're watching this, I don't want you to just nod your head and say, yay or nay, but I want you to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you this moment as we pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. And I commit your children unto you in prayer, asking that you, by your mercy, will locate every single one who has a desire to know you more. Every single person under the sound of my voice who is determined to turn away from their old ways. We struggle too hard on our own strength, but we are asking you, Lord, for your spirit, as we make room in our lives for you, we make room for your spirit to rule. And we ask, oh God, that you come into our hearts, come into our lives, take over every aspect, oh Lord, and begin to direct us again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Now, brethren, I'm not doing an altar call and I'm not asking you to make a decision. That was your altar call right there. You don't need anyone to talk to God. You don't need anyone. There is no one else that you need except Jesus Christ. And you just need to make up your mind and speak to Jesus even right now and say, Lord, I have sinned. Lord, I realize that I've been doing things on my own strength. I need your Holy Spirit. I need to understand more about you and I want you to reveal yourself to me. Don't fake it because you will not make it. No more pretense and lies. Ask the Lord to give you an understanding of who he truly is so that you can see who you truly are and such that you can be able to represent God accurately if you choose to. God bless you. And have a great week.